Apple pie. What? <laughs> we, don't, we do not need to take pride <laughs> SpongeBob. Wait, was that a really young Jimmy Carr? <laughs> Why do you question me uh, already? I should. It's a like, sandwich. I, it's a sandwich. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be checking out top 10 things America stole from Britain. It's, I might be surprised by a few of these. Uh, I know there's a lot of things since we started this channel that I've come to realize that were invented or made yeah. by a Brit. I'm really curious how much of this is historical stuff or more modern day stuff because I think it goes into both. Just a quick uh, thing, like I knew Alexander Graham Bell invented the phone, I kind of knew the whole story and stuff, but I didn't realize he was actually a Scot. He was a oh. Scottish person. Even though he was a Scot, like I just for some reason assumed he was American. <laughs> and I shouldn't. But yeah, so there's like there's a lot of that that happens though. Even if it was technically made here, it wasn't invented or developed right. by an American. Like they had it first. Yeah. So anyway, guys, stole it from them. we're gonna find out. This is Watch Mojo. I know some people don't like Watch Mojo. This is Watch Mojo UK. I don't know if that makes a difference, guys. For anyway. us, it's just informative, and you guys are feel free to correct us all you want because. We don't know everything. Before you get into the video, please like, share, and subscribe if you like this type of content. Uh, go check out the channel's Discord and send us future recommendations that way. And we'll see you guys in the comments below. For this list, we're counting down famous facets of American culture which actually originated in Britain. While standout British inventions are subject for another list, today's countdown tackles typically American things, which the US has the UK to thank for. Mm. Okay, so that's a little different than I was saying. I was thinking it would be like more inventions and stuff, but okay. that'd be an interesting video to check out though. Number 10, Apple Pie. Really? What? As American as Apple Pie, right? That was, literally, that's the same. Yeah. What? Wrong. The sweet treat is a staple on US dining tables, but the British were the first to serve it way back in the 1300s. A popular dessert Damn. throughout European history, with Dutch and Swedish styles also inspiring menus worldwide, it was taken across the pond with the 17th century colonists. Since then, apple pie has become a standout symbol of US patriotism, as well as a central component to a teen comedy franchise. It's not are... what it looks like. <laughs> okay, well I was gonna say a lot of those clips before were from the British Baking Show. Yeah, I know I got that angle, Ramsey, but um, yeah, American Pie is definitely an American movie. It's, <laughs> I watched them, I did enjoy them, I will admit. They are hilarious. I don't know if I would say I recommend them because they're kind of awful. They're but... very raunchy. Yeah. As well as a central component to a teen comedy franchise. Franchise. It's not what it looks like. Number nine, YMCA. What? Way before village people turned this institution into a cheesy disco anthem, and long before the YMCA swept across America, the Young Men's Christian Association was the brainchild of English philanthropist George Williams. Dismayed by working conditions in 18th century London, Williams conceived the now famous charity as a safe place for its patrons. While the movement's worldwide influence is something to be proud of, difficult to imagine Williams joining in with the dance moves. <laughs> Number 8, Chocolate Bars. I think I'll eat it now! <laughs> well, I know, like, we didn't Candy invent bar. chocolate. Well, yeah, I, I, I feel like, forever. As I say, I feel like chocolate, maybe modern day I concept. the Spaniards I, invented it. No, probably say, but I, I feel like chocolate bars have been around for over a thousand years. Oh. <laughs> if not longer. So I, I did not assume at all that that was American. No. SpongeBob's <laughs> American. Candy or bars are big business stateside, but before. It is, sadly. We, don't, we do not need to take pride <laughs> in claiming SpongeBob. It's ours! It's stupid. Or Mars, Hershey's, Milky Bar, or Baby Ruth. There was one bloke in Bristol making confectionery history. Joseph Fry finalised the first mass-produced chocolate bar in the mid-1800s, around the time that the Dutch developed a chocolate press. Fry's chocolate cream hit shelves in 1866 oh, with a famed fondant filling, and the bar can oh, still be bought today. John Cadbury quickly followed suit, while the likes of Hershey's didn't arrive until the late 1890s. Number seven, Cadbury is so good. I know. That just reminds me we should check out some more of uh, like uh, food adverts. Mmm, yeah. Like stuff we've tried or something that we've, like, check out. We should just check out some British adverts if we want to try to <laughs> Sandwiches. Could I have a glass of wine? Okay. And a, and a ham sandwich. <laughs> if you like. I could be totally wrong, but I think that's uh, the comedian Bill Bailey. We've had some recommendations to check oh, him out. Really? The guy on the left. Okay. With the long hair. So, yeah, guys, I've never heard of the show. Let us know down below if it's any good, if we should check out some clips. Ham sandwich. <laughs> if you like. With a pickle? 
All right. Thanks to world-conquering fast food outlets, Homer oh Simpson and Joey Tribbiani, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this foodstuff was a US creation. However, the history of the sandwich is long and complicated, and very little of it happened in America. While cooking. early versions are recorded across Europe, it's named after the fourth Earl of Sandwich in Kent. The story goes that he was an ardent gambler, and meat between bread was the simplest way of eating without disrupting a game of cards. Sandwich for display purposes only and should not be eaten. Number six. So yeah, I, I again, as well as I would not assume that that's America. And I don't even know if it's really, I feel like in the UK at least, it, it looked like a lot of people eat sandwiches too. I, I don't think it's uniquely American at all. No, I think, sandwiches. when I think of sandwich, I kind of think of like a cheeseburger and stuff like that. It's I feel a like sandwich. I, it's a sandwich. No, it's a not. burger and... Between two pieces of bread, it's a okay, sandwich. Maybe, I don't know the technical terms. I'm not a sandwich connoisseur. <laughs> it has its own name, a burger. I know, but it's but a type sandwich. of sandwich. Okay. Cheeseburger sandwich. You are probably technically correct. <laughs> I but, feel like a, like what I'm saying, a burger is more American than like yes, a, well, a typical sandwich. I shouldn't be so confident in that because I'm not for sure. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is I feel you same. wouldn't go to a restaurant and be like, I want a sandwich and expect them to bring you out a burger. No, you'd expect like so there turkey is or a ham difference. and cheese or something. The Office. That's what she said. <laughs> that one I knew. Yeah, you've watched The Office like 13 times. <laughs> the British version. I like that one too. But they only have like one, maybe and two yes, seasons And yes, we or so. mean the TV show and not the actual open plan workplace, <laughs> which is largely a German invention. Anyway, unlike a lot of American remakes of British TV, The Office US did manage to tap into most of what made its predecessor pair. But after nine series and a shed load of awards, let's just remember where it all started. Steve Carell's Michael Scott is hilarious in his own right, but for fans of the British original, yeah. he'll always be David Brent in disguise. <laughs> I have not seen the first version. <laughs> Number five, plastic surgery. It's wow. Very awkward. That came out of me. From Botox what? to boob jobs, America is the world's leading market for cosmetic surgery, with millions going under the knife every year. But the industry was by no means born in the USA. Sir Harold Gillies is often credited as the father of plastic Carlos surgery, a New Zealand-born, London-based surgeon who gathered leading physicians to treat thousands of why soldiers who had been injured Ugh. or disfigured in World War One. Gillies. That makes more sense of why plastic surgery came about. Is because to help. Well, no, that's what I was going. To, that's what I was going to mention. Was in some ways, it's a good and bad invention. Right. Like probably like most inventions can be, because it has some amazing results. Like yeah. you know, burn victims or soldiers or people with yeah. disfigurements or something. Like they can have plastic surgery and feel better about themselves and everything. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the extreme side where yeah, people get too much. <laughs> So much that it, they do it so often that it's killing them, like the fillers. Not so much like just plastic surgery, but like all the fillers and stuff that they inject. There's like two sides to each coin, but... ...conditions to treat thousands of soldiers who had been injured or disfigured in World War I. Gillies' work became a blueprint for all sorts of reconstructive procedures, and a starting point for today's aesthetic options. Number four, the light bulb. A supposedly serial stealer of other people's ideas, Thomas Edison's light bulb moment is considered one of the most significant steps in modern technology. Hey Edison, how about sharing some of those light bulbs, huh? Hey, figure it out for yourself, man! But experts are continually divided on just how much Edison did to develop the design. Before the Wizard of Menlo Park, there were countless other scientists creating electric light and light bulbs, not least British pioneers including Humphrey Davy and Joseph Swan. The anti-Edison camp claims that the inventor's only skill was knowing when to patent. One thing yes. Edison did... Yeah, I think... I, I mean, I knew about that because the light bulb... Like, he gets credit with it, but it wasn't... His original idea. Well, there were so many light bulbs at the time, but they like almost instantly burned out. Yeah. So he was accredited with making, like, the longer-lasting light bulb. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, Thomas Edison, there's a lot of dirt on him, and he was not actually that great of a guy. Now, I'm pretty sure he did invent some things. Like, he was an inventive person and right. had engineering mind and everything. Or reinvented a bunch of things. He gets a credit with a lot of things that he didn't actually do. <laughs> right. Knowing when to patent. One thing yes. Edison did invent. Patent. 100% genuine Edison invention that we use every day, probably, most of us. Is it uh, nasal hair clippers? Number three, <laughs> donuts. Wait, was that a really young Jimmy Carr? No. That looked like Jimmy Carr. Probably most of us. Is it uh, nasal hair clippers? No. That is! It is Jimmy Carr! Uh, you can hear it in his voice! <laughs> Why do you question me always? I sure did. I was looking at the... Oh, my God. You were looking at the other guy? It was a chubby ch Jimmy Carr. All uh, right, congratulations. <laughs> Number three, donuts. Really? Really? 
Oh, I actually just showed you that. Oh, what was that? Now, the that origins so of the weird. donut are a sticky affair, with claims and counterclaims sending historians round and round in circles. However, while a stronger suggestion remains that the Dutch took the treats to America in the mid 19th century, a 2013 discovery seemingly proves that the Brits were baking them at least 50 years before. Baroness huh. Elizabeth Dimsdale's cookbook dates to 1800 and includes a strikingly similar recipe a deep fried concoction of sugar, eggs, butter, and yeast. Add some icing, and it's the real deal. Number two. I'm not that surprised on the donut thing. I feel like yeah. it's a pretty old invention. Yeah, concept. yeah. I would okay. have guessed like maybe now, France or something. Had this, it. I'm surprised by. Baseball? Yeah. I know they have rounders. Yeah. And then they have... Well, but you know, if we stole the idea and developed I don't know. baseball... We'll, we'll, let's find out. Baseball. <laughs> a national sport and obsession in the US, baseball was born in the UK. There are countless records of bat and ball games being played in Blighty starting with stool ball in the 1300s. Huh. Sure, Damn. the rules have changed and refined over the years, but the basic premise is usually the same. Throw someone pitches, someone swings, others try to catch. Yeah. In fact, some researchers argue that baseball is an offshoot of cricket, an English obsession which didn't catch on across the Atlantic at all. Huh, okay, I see, wonder why. <laughs> well, I know when we did the video on the cricket, though, people were like, it's nothing like baseball. Stop comparing it. So, we're well, not the only ones that there are similarities. You can yeah, compare it somewhat. Yes. Yeah. From what I understand, rounders is a way more like our version it, of baseball. Well, they say it's more for um, kids. kids. Yeah. An English obsession which didn't catch on across the Atlantic at all. Number one, the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> We finish with a final salute for so Grim. What is that? Have oh, you I seen don't that? Really... No, but I think I know it's one of those like stop motion animated movies oh with like gosh, toys. It looks so bad. It's very cringy. We finish with a final salute for great British influence on American culture because the US national anthem is sung to the tune of an 18th century English drinking song. Oh, okay, so Baltimore it's a wordsmith tune. Francis Southern Scott words. Key takes full credit for the lyrics, but the melody was written by John Stafford Smith a Gloucester-born composer. The huh. anacreontic song, as it was originally known, was regularly belted around a prestigious London gentleman's club, where wealthy people met to wine and dine. That would be an interesting one to look up, actually, is what that pub song is. Yeah, I mean, that's in interesting. I'm actually not as surprised about the Star Spangled Banner. I'm a little bit. At first, I was just like, that, that, all the lyrics are purely American, but no, it was just the tune. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, they weren't as shocking <laughs> that I thought was, well, the most shocking about this video is that you recognize Jimmy Carr in a split <laughs> second. Proving me wrong once again. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I can take my wins where I get them. You get them often, so let us know down in the comments what you thought and if you were surprised by any of those. And if there's some bigger shocks out there that we don't know about, please comment below and let us be shocked all over again. Well, I think we really definitely should check out the inventions because I feel like there's a huge list. Well, the thing is, we're a relatively a young country compared to most, so I feel like a lot of things came first in other countries. Yeah, I mean, that's to be expected. I just, I feel like- We're so heavily influenced by other other countries and they're in the beginning for sure. Some of those were definitely surprising. Like the apple pie, I would not have guessed that. I will say, because I did want to kind of say it then, but I wasn't sure is uh you guys do apple pie different because I did get an apple pie when we were in London. I was not a fan. Well, it could have just been where you got though. Maybe, it was at I've a had, pub. And so I've had apple pie here that I've hated. I guess, but I don't know. I, I like my own apple pie. Maybe that's why, so. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something along with us and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.